Hi there, grade 12s. And in today's video, we're going to be looking at the PET. Now, this is for the IEB learners. So um, please don't get confused with that. So we're going to be looking at phase two. And the first thing I'm going to do is just go through the document so that we can get to phase um, one, just to the end of phase one. Please remember, phase one focused on the task definition and information finding strategies. That was worth 40 marks. Um, in phase two, it's also worth 40 marks, but this is where we're going to access the information, determine the relevance, you know, do all of that type of thing. So let's just go to the end of phase one to make sure, um, you know, what we would have handed in. We would have had a document that has a description of the problem, a main question, then your table of questions. You would have those questions categorized, you know, according to this list over here. You'd have a reference list, um, a screen dump of a spell check, and uh, then you'd obviously hand that in on time and make sure that the assessment tool, um, you know, you've, you've you've met all the requirements necessary. So let's let's go and have a look at that assessment tool. Let's go down phase one. There you can see for the introduction, um, we'd get five marks. Our main question, then for having twenty questions, twenty good questions for having it arranged and grouped. Now the two marks, the relevance four marks, um, the variety of sources, so wherever we got that from, with six marks. Now you can see, I want you to have a look at this, six marks will give you, sorry, in order to get the six marks, you will need three or more different types of sources. So if you only have one source, just understand it's gonna be one mark, okay? Um, the criteria as to how the information will be assessed, gathered, recorded. You know, are you going to be using the internet, uh, words or phrases, URLs of websites, how the data will be organized in a database, all of those things, the relevant criteria has been provided for all the questions. That'll give you your six marks and then your accuracy and handing it in on time. Okay, so I do have a sample. This is from a learner. And in their phase one, yeah, you can see the phase one, so you can understand what it looks like. There's phase one, there's the task description, the main question. You can also see how the questions were sorted in terms of the, the uh, table. Yeah, you can see the venue, the question. This was the particular category. Um, the question category, what type of question is it? Is it also closed or open-ended? Um, you know, what sort of method are you going to use to answer that question and the keywords used. So you'll see in some cases you would use keywords, but obviously with the server, you're not going to use um, keywords there as well. Right. So we're going to go down. You can see going through. I think this was um, dealing with an event that, that was actually going to take place. And there you can see there's a little screen dump showing that the spell check has been done and guys that's that's it for you know phase one right so make sure you have that in place right so now we're moving on to phase two so let me just have a look at the document first um, before we go into the tips so for phase two you can see they mention in the following to us phase two is basically broken up into two tasks the first one is to check out the evidence of questions and information. So all questions have been copied from phase one and formatted correctly. Relevant information has been found. So have you answered all of the questions, right? The questions that you had put in place in phase one. You are answering them now in phase two. The evidence of various sources, i.e. notes taken from books, clippings taken from magazines, Right? In other words, if you checked out a particular source, do you have evidence to back up that you actually went to that source? So it could be a screenshot. Um, let's say, for example, you went to a particular website. Right? You indicated in your table. Let me just go here. So in phase one, here you said, for example, there's your category, your question, um, the question category. And you said, yeah, well, I'm going to use the Internet. So in phase two, you would now have to provide proof of that. So let me um, just go to phase two here so that you can see. So here, for example, this learner is saying that, well, now they're going to be using um, 
you know, word processing to do what? They use it to create a survey. Now, where do we get that information from? And please forgive me for bouncing back and forth. In phase one, what did, what did the learners say? They said that in some cases they were going to use a survey to extract information, right? To get to an answer. And that's exactly what they've done. A survey, which categories dealt with surveys? Accommodation, guests, transport. Accommodation, guests, transport. Do you, do you see where I'm going with this? Then the resources. Well, you'll be using an electronic form, okay? Um, proof of authenticity, obviously you created it yourself, so you might not be able to put anything there. Um, what is it integrated with? How is it integrated with Word? Well, you would do a mail merge electronic survey with data from Excel. Okay, but obviously your integration might be different. What are you going to integrate this electronic form with? Are you going to integrate it with Word? I mean, sorry, Excel with PowerPoint, you know, database. What are you going to be doing? And then they wanted to know um, the answers to your question. So since you've done this, what is the answer to that question going to be? So if I go to accommodation, this was in phase one, accommodation, and you'll see here, what are the sleeping arrangements? It's an investigative question, open-ended, and we're going to use a survey to get the answer. Here we go. Survey, accommodation, electronic form being used. What are the sleeping arrangements? Ah, here's our answer. Farmhouse suite, four. Garden cottage, seven. The numbers indicate how many guests are um, going to choose that particular option. So you can see how phase one is linked through into phase two. Okay, guys, this is what you have to do. You can see that we are taking these same questions from phase one and we are using what we said we were going to do in order to get our answer. So what's also interesting is the fact that some of these are open-ended. So you can have some open-ended, especially when it's surveys, right? Because you might be asking people's opinion um, and, and that's fine as long as you can turn it into answers that we can get over here, right? Uh, let's go back. Let's go back. Right. Then um, important facts summarized, highlighted, marked and cross-referenced to questions posed in phase one. Now, did we see that? Yes, we did. We saw that. When I looked at this phase two and I looked at those answers to the questions, is there a distinctive link to phase one? Yes, there is. Is there evidence that the information is usable and of good quality? Well, how do we do that? We can go and check out the website URL the date it's created, the date it's published, okay? They want evidence of this. So let me go through. And yeah, you can see, all right? Um, for some, you can, obviously, if you've gone to a particular site, uh, you can get the evidence there. You can see there it's the copywritten date, um, you know, all, all of that type of information just to show what do they want? That each website is validated. All right. So yeah, you can see the learner went through these particular questions and because of the sites they went to, gave the relevant um, evidence. Okay. Then you need to have a reference list. They say added at the end of the report document, citing references used throughout the document to link information and pictures to references. So all they're saying to you is if you're going to be using these pictures and that you're going to have to have a reference list. So if I go all the way down to the bottom, um, I should see a reference list over here. Now, this will be um, the references to basically the pictures that you were using, right? Because we're using it from a different source, we have to reference those things. Okay. Um, yeah, I think that's, that's really all over there. Okay. So that's fine. You understand our reference list. If the reference list is technically correct with all the references, citing every reference, you'll get the marks. So that's the first task of phase two. The second one is now using the information. We're going to begin our planning. 
So they say the first thing we need to do is the framework in which you present your solution to the problem. You need evidence of a framework on how the information will be organized and used. It's created in an appropriate format, uses headings and subheadings in a table, diagrams, charts, word outlines or story. Okay, so let's go to our example and see um, you know, practically what this learner did. So yes, they created a survey, then you'll see um, the learner was going to turn that into a booklet. Where is it? Okay, here we go. It's going to turn that into a uh, booklet, and that booklet would cover things like the venue, the accommodation, um, the transport as well. All right. You can also see further down that she's going to be utilizing Excel to create a guest list for the people who um, they have invited. This budget that she gives will also have the various costs for transport, etc. And again, what is, remember, you, you need to use three pieces of software. So already Word has been used. Secondly, she's using Excel for what? To work out the budget. In other words, the cost of everything. And here you can see, right? Um, it's going to link up to phase one. We can see the table above for the survey. That was the one that was used previously. And the information, it, so you, you could be using a Google form, all right? And you get your results and you can take that and export that into Excel. Or you can even export it into, into Access. You know, it, it depends on what you're going to be doing with it. And then obviously answering those questions as well. Okay, here in database, you can see the same thing. Um, I'll be creating tables that will include guests and all the information that come with the guests, like which room they are staying in, etc. So she's taking that information and turning that into a database. That's why uh, the learner is saying import spreadsheet from Excel into Access to create a table. So you can see once you've you know, created that whole table in, in um, Excel, you can simply import that into, into your database program, into Access um, and then, you know, bring up all the people's information. And in that way, you would have used three pieces of software. Okay. So as you do that, can you see how this is starting to work now? Because they're not taking that information, turning that into a little booklet, um, putting it into, into a spreadsheet as well. Um, you want to then plan your final solution. You need to use at least three applications. Now you can use a web, you know, web design software. You can create a website. Um, you can do, you know, graphics and movie video editing. You can do that. The final plan uses at least three applications. So they're not saying which ones, but they're giving you an idea. Um, it has a purpose and is clearly stated and appropriate. Okay, so for that, you know, if you want to have uh, Word is the first one, you know, create a survey. Um, maybe you want to then you know, turn it into a spreadsheet and the result you want to present in PowerPoint, you know, or you want to present it in, you know, by, by my, making a movie or something like that, you know, little video clips that, that turns into a movie that presents the final result to everyone. Um, you can do that. And then integration between applications is clearly indicated. So you can see on this how the learner has mentioned, well, she's going to, you know, take that survey and export it into Access, or sorry, the spreadsheet and export that into Access. So that's how um, integration takes place. In other words, how, how are the programs going to be working with one another in order to accomplish the goal? And you need to give evidence of that integration between applications. Now, when it comes to a video, you could be saying something like, well, um, I'm going to take the information I have and I'm going to turn that into a, a video, you know, with, with all the relevant information in it. And then obviously accuracy, you want to make sure it's free of typing, spelling and grammar errors, and then just hand it in on time. So that's phase two. Let's go to the assessment tools. Let's go and have a look at phase two. Here you can see this is they actually give you in the assessment tools the um, type of table that you should be putting in place. So you want uh, evidence of the information, completed questionnaires or surveys, uh, important facts have been highlighted and summarized, right? Evidence of the information found, 
evidence is uh, of the information being usable. So is it a proper website? You know, has the website, uh, when was the website created? When is the, you know, when was the last time something was published on the website? How are you going to be using the information? Well, I'm going to be using it to turn it into a booklet, to turn it into a PowerPoint presentation or a website. Um, your, your framework that you need to have, the, the purpose and use, sorry, the purpose and use at least two of the following. So there they tell us spreadsheet, database, presentation, movie, video, or web page. So you must use at least two um, of those. Then check the word process into as per usual and uh, the purpose and integration between the applications is clear. And that's how you end up getting your marks for that phase. So now we can see what that is beginning to look like. In phase one, sorry, where am I now? In phase one, we just had our questionnaire, we had our main question, we had our task description, everything was okay. And now we've taken that and we've had to answer that so yeah a couple of tips for phase two please you don't get marks for copying the phase one document into your phase two folder you can see with this particular one what is in phase two you can see how that it's just one document guys right phase one it was just one document so everything's been done in there um, you then want to answer your key question so you need to answer the key, key question in a minimum of 30 words um, then you're going to copy and paste the table into the phase two template for each question that you used in phase one. The aim is to answer each question using the relevant sources. Remember that the sources should include a questionnaire survey as well as other sources besides just the internet. Okay, so do try and look at something else. Even if you're going to use a verbal interview, you know, be, um, you know interviewing someone from a travel agency or things like that, that would be fine. Insert each question next to the question number. That's fine. Type in the type of source you are going to use. Find the information you're going to need from your sources so that you'll be able to answer the question. Then you answer your question in the answer to question row. Okay, those things we've seen. Use the Harvard referencing style and you can see where that's located in Word. Okay, if you're not sure about that. Then give proof of authenticity. Right. So um, you want to look at does it have a return policy, an author, a date created. All those things will speak to the authenticity and accuracy of that site. Once you've completed all your tables, you must complete task two, which is what we went through as well. Um, so you had to mention at the end of your phase two, you must window dress your document, <laughs> format it very nicely to make sure it looks professional and attractive. Use consistent colors, font styles in line with your phase one document. Check where the word tab on your pet mark sheet for phase three um, to ensure you're using as many word skills as necessary to get good marks. In other words, are you using things like headers, footers, automatic page numbering, styles for headings, bullets, smart art, graphs, you know, all those type of things. Um, that's just going to add uh, when it comes to the marking. All right, then they mention submit one single phase to document in Word, minimum of three to six pages. Um, there you can see the breakdown for each question. I think that was about it. Okay, so guys, I hope this helps you understand what you need to do for phase two. Um, and I will have another short video where I'm going to be detailing um, what each one of those uh, you know, pieces of software, your, your Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and even your video, um, what to look for and what you need to make sure you have in those documents in order to get the maximum marks possible. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video.